What's up, y'all? It's Oliver here, Big Bass Dreams. We're going to bring you a special edition of Mail Call on the water. So recently I just got another package from Mega Bass, and this is actually a Mega Bass Japan order. So these items might be a little bit more difficult to acquire. Uh, I do know there are some specialty shops out there that are carrying the JDM products. So you stand a good chance of finding them. But I didn't have time to do a video for you guys to go over the new goodies back at the house. So I just grabbed the box, a couple other things uh, along with it, and took it out on the boat today. And it's such a nice day, we might as well do it here on the water for the first time. So, a couple of things here. Check that bad boy out. Anybody that's a fan of the S-Crank, man, and a fan of crawfish colors, this is a new spring craw. Now, back in the day when I was a kid, I'm not a kid anymore, but some days I sit back and really wish I was a kid again. There was a crawfish colored bomber fat free shad that had this brownish tint. This is probably the closest thing I've found in, to that pattern in a translucent um, kind of deal too. But as far as a crawfish pattern goes, that's fire. This is the smallest size S crank, the 1.2. Spring craw. Gotta love it. Now those those of you that like fishing square bills but haven't tied on an S crank, what makes this bait really special is that on a straight retrieve, even in open water, it's gonna kick out just like any other square bill would off of a deflection. But with this bait, it's unique because it kind of does that without the actual deflection happening. So if you have a fish tracking the bait and all of a sudden it boom kicks out in that little S pattern, hence the name the S crank, it triggers a lot of bites even in open water. But what makes this bait a lot of fun is that I fish it like a little bumper car. I go find shallow cover, whether it's rock, whether it's brush, timber, and I throw it in the heart of the stuff. And as long as you keep a steady retrieve, this bait is going to crawl through like the gnarliest stuff. And the more stuff you can hit with this, the more likely you're going to get bit. It's kind of, kind of goes against your intuition, right? $20 crankbait. Like, oh, do I really want to throw that in that thick cover? And trust me when I tell you, yes, you do. So, first item. And of course, I ordered three of them. I already know I'm gonna catch him on this thing. You gotta have a backup for your backup. Oh boy. Here's another S Crank 1.2. Sticking with that crawfish theme. Chartreuse craw. Oh my bad, I'm dyslexic. It's a uh, crawfish chartreuse check that out real similar translucent you know earth tone body for the most part but check that head out how sick does that look you know so I'm gonna pick this bait when there's a little bit of a stain in the water maybe I'm fishing clear water and a mud line gets kicked up whether it's from the wind or from boat traffic you know if there's a little algae stain but you're not fishing super stained or you know maybe it's not quite that tannic but there's just a little bit of color in the water I'm gonna pick this crawfish chartreuse that thing is pretty what else do we got here <sighs> wow seriously probably one of the most underrated jerk baits in all of the world. Now everybody knows the 110 and how absolutely sick it is. But this bait right here can really hold its own. And it's the Ito Shiner. 
right off the bat you can tell it's a little bit different body shape a little bit bigger profile it's a more robust jerk bait for me it tends to draw a little bit bigger bite especially with the small mouth and I can say that with confidence because my PB a 7-1 fell victim to an Ito Shiner and I've never even seen this color before it's so sick. I don't even know what it's called. GS. Biwa Higai. <laughs> Biwa whatever that says. Limited edition. But once again, you know, we fish a lot of clear water in the west, up in the north. When I'm targeting smallmouth, it's typically in high visibility situations. So I like a color that's got a little bit of translucency. So once you see it up against, you know, a sky background, it breaks up the silhouette a little bit. You know, this kind of looks like an overall bait fish imitator to me. Green, green top, shoulders, a little bit of orange flash on the belly. So sick. Even though it's December, I had to get, grab me a couple more Pop Maxes. Check that bad boy out. So this is a limited edition Pop Max here. This is the abalone series and it's named that because it's got a little bit of a kind of a abalone type of pearlescent to it so it's a translucent bait with multiple layers it almost seems like it's hard to describe but it's almost like the sides are translucent Check that out with that color kind of set inside the bait which creates a really unique effect I mean let's just be real that looks badass you know the, the artistry and the function that goes into every one of these baits is second to none that instills confidence one more oh boy same series here we got the bass in the abalone series once again we got a translucent body style kind of a ghost pattern it's hard to see but like same deal like the sides are kind of translucent I mean what's there more to say about that and I'm a huge huge fan of baby bass patterns always have been you know like all those Mike Long bass patterns back in the day it's like whoa you know even back to my old top waters that I grew up fishing the baby bass pattern was always a high confidence bait because no matter where I went, there were baby bass in the water, right? You're bass fishing. Bass are highly cannibalistic. So this is a prey item that you're going to find literally everywhere you're bass fishing. My goodness, that is so sick. Like, I don't know if you guys can see or not, but like you can see the red gills on the inside of the head. How clean is that? Man. I can dig it. I can dig it. Alright, what else do we got here? Alright, wrapping up the hard baits here. This is a new bait for me. This is an X10. Now, one of the best things about fishing the Mega Bass lineup is the sheer variety of different jerk baits available in all size ranges. I'm pretty sure the 70 denotes the size in millimeters. My metric system's a little rusty, but I ordered this bait because 
there are times when these fish, even the bigger fish, especially here on the west coast, get locked into smaller prey items, whether that's small shad, silver sides, ghost minnows. They flat out refuse to respond to a standard size jerk bait, let's say the 110 for example. So you can get really finesse on them and closely match the hatch with a smaller offering like this, but still pre present them a high quality lure in this Mega Bass X70. And this is, you know, this is one of my favorite colors throughout the entire lineup. It's the Wagen Hasu. And once again, I could be butchering, butchering that name, but... Huh. Alright, I saw these on the order form and had to pick this up. Now, this is a bait I've seen floating around on the internet for a couple years now, I think. At least the whole season. And it's the Mega Bass Pivot. Now, I've caught a lot of fish on the Pony Gabbit, which is the frog. So the funny thing about frog fishing for me personally is that I'm not necessarily mimicking an actual frog. I spend a lot of time on the water throughout the country, the west, the south, the north, lily pads, grass, algae mats. Very, very rarely do I actually see a frog in the water, and when I do, it's usually like a pound and a half bullfrog that's this big and trying to eat my frog. What I do see regularly is smaller bait fish up on the surface in and around this heavy cover. So this Mega Bass Pivot to me is a perfect weedless presentation for a prey item in my opinion that they're probably feeding on a lot more than an actual frog. So now you have that weedless capability in a fish profile. This is the nude Ayu. Got a little color to it, but still translucent. That should do really well in various water types. The cool thing is, I ordered it in a couple different colors. Nude Wagasaki. And if you guys aren't sure what colors to start with because of the varied selection of colors, throughout the product line. I'm gonna tell you right now that nude, that Wagasaki of every type is a favorite of mine. You can't go wrong. Oh man, that's sick. What do we got here? New Wagasaki, new Wagasaki. I told you I like that color. That's the white peach color. You know, with my frog fishing, I, I tend to keep it pretty simple. It's either a black, a white, or some kind of tan or brown color. So for me, this white peach is gonna be a solid producer for me. What I like about this pattern is it's highly visible takes me back to bobber fishing for bluegill and crappie, right? You throw that thing out there and even in dense cover, you can actually track this bait as it's walking. And as soon as that white disappears, hit them. Because for, for the most part, you know, all they're really seeing is the profile and the side profile as it's flashing and walking. And you can never go wrong with white. That thing looks dope. That was the nude pivot right there. Put that right back in there. So that wraps up my bait selection there. Now let's get into really cool stuff. This is the this is one of the new TS destroyers straight out of Japan. I got three different models here. And this first one is a TS-79X. There's the handle section. This rod too is sick. 
Now these destroyers come disassembled, but it's really simple. You know, it, it really helps with shipping and handling and transport. Even when I'm packing these things up for my cross country adventures, it's a really nice feature when you have as much tackle as I do to be able to break down a rod like this. And it's simple as twisting it in place, making sure those guides line, line up and seating it perfectly. But look at the fit and finish on this rod. It's second to none. Straight up Ito Engineering. Everything about this thing is high quality. So this particular model, like I said, is the TS-79X. Subname is Hunting Weapon 209. How do they come up with this stuff? Like that's, oh, what rod are you fishing? Hunting weapon. That's bad. And this one's rated four to 20 ounce and 20 to 40 pound line. So this is really no slouch when it comes to rods. This is a rod that I ordered with the expectation of fishing some of these bigger baits, of course for the largemouth, but also now that I'm an amateur musky fisherman and an amateur striper fisherman, I have a rod that's truly built to hunt big fish. 20 to 40 pound line, I can fish 30 pound line with a fully locked drag. And you guys can kind of see the taper of this thing. Like this. This is a rod. <laughs> that's gonna be able to move some real fish in and out of cover. So this is a true giant hunting weapon right here. And this is just one of three. Let's see what else we got. And in this two, should probably go to the other one first. This particular rod I ordered in anticipation of heading back east and fishing a lot of target rich lakes. And I'm talking about docks, overhanging trees, timber. What we have here is the TS78X Plus, co or sub name King of Baccarat. So the King of Baccarat really stuck out to me for that close contact tight quarter fishing. Short, accurate cast, backhand cast, full, you know, uh, sidearm cast, and skip cast, especially with the soft baits, and placing a lure in a small window. The the seven foot eight inch length really helps with that, and very few rods out there are built to these specs. So this is a very unique and and highly specialized big fish hunting tool. It's the king. Now we got the beast. The beast. You guys ready for this one? Handle section. And the blank section. Once again, line them up roughly. Twisting action. Line up the guides and seat. And what do we have here? This is a TS-82X. 10, 10 G Gen? T-N-C-H-I-J-I-N. Now this is an eight foot two, six to 25 ounce and 25 to 45 pound rated rod. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm trying to catch with this thing because it is probably the most obscene rod I've ever held in my hands. Now, when I'm gonna be back east targeting a 50 inch muskie and a, hopefully a 60 pound striper with the biggest, baddest baits out there, 
this is the rod I have in mind, especially for the long distance casting stuff. That long eight foot two is gonna really help effectively cast and fish those bigger baits. Honestly, I think it might be a little too much for bass or any black bass applications. But for you know these other trophy fish like the big stripers and these big musky, it's an awesome, awesome fishing tool. I mean, do you guys see what that says right there? Hold on, which way do I gotta hold this thing for you to read it? Now you wanna talk about aim high, dream big, and visualizing your goals. Hope you catch the world record. Who puts that on a rod? That's so sick. I didn't even, I've never, I'm at a loss for words. I didn't even notice that. I mean, just take a look at the craftsmanship and the assembly of this rod. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna boat flip a 50 pound striper with this thing. I mean, check out, it's hard to really relay the taper on this thing effectively, but I could probably pole vault with this thing. <laughs> We're gonna let my boy uh, guest star in the back here. What are you trying to do? Oh, pull down on the tip, man. should do pretty good for bluegill fishing and the mealworm you want to you want to see what that feels like hold on tight dude <laughs> brace yourself yeah don't release it i'm gonna fly pull up jesus yeah yeah they, this ain't a game <laughs> what do you think this thing's a beast hey Hope you catch a world record. Yeah, let's catch one. Hold on. Never mind, you already did that. <laughs> it's pretty tight that they would put that on there, though. Dude, that's super tight, isn't it? All right. Wrap up this little mail call. Guru Fishing sent me a couple of pretty sweet, unique boxes here. You know, and initially I'm like, okay, another tackle box. But one of the things that I noticed was they actually don't use like a latch system, but rather a pneumonium magnet system. So there's no latches to break. That's pretty cool. And I believe this is their jig box. And upon first inspection, it's kind of got like this gummy slot system in here, which is kind of unique. Looks like this thing is capable of holding quite a few baits, so I'm actually, I just pulled out my jig box here, or one of my jig boxes. We got some Mega Bass Drunk Fly jigs. That's a whole another story in itself right there. You guys are gonna have to tune in for this thing. But let's see how this thing seats in here. I've, I've never used this thing before, so I'm only kind of taking a guess. It looks like I can wedge that thing in there pretty easily. Let's get a couple of them in there and see how it holds. <clears throat> so far so good. That is pretty sweet. So I can totally see this thing working out for me as a jig box already. I might be able to get most if not all of these jigs actually in the system and most importantly organized yeah so far I like that it's pretty clean pretty innovative you know I, I, Tackle storage is always an issue for me. Luckily, I'm not complaining. Um, so any little advantage I can get to figure out ways to put more tackle in my boat, I'm gonna take. But yeah, this thing is pretty clean, man.
Check that out. Let's just give it a little test. Okay, so look at that. No latch. Magnet system seems pretty legit. Dirt roads in Montana. It's a simulator. Not a single one is displaced. That's pretty awesome. Okay. We'll see if it holds up uh, to the test of time, but uh, I'm feeling pretty good about it. Seems pretty well constructed. Um, good idea. Nice execution, guys. Groove Fishing. G-R-U-V. Check them out. I'm pretty sure they have an Instagram account. They got some pretty... Uh, Pretty unique storage solutions. But yeah, we're gonna wrap it up here. This edition of Mail Call brought to you on the water because we have fish to catch. Catch you guys later.